Okay, we're kicking off the 2023 fluke season on cooking and fishing. This year I'll be focusing a few early videos on fishing fundamentals, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel. So here's footage from a trip I took last year. It's been a while since I've explained the rationale behind fishing a light single jig for fluke. So let's go over that in this video. As my content from the past several years attest, the single jig technique catches both size and numbers. You've seen myself and people have taught the method to putting together double, triple, quintuple limits from shore, with several fish over six pounds, a few sevens, and a couple over eight recorded on the channel. So why is a single jig so effective compared to some other common fluke rigs? For starters, it's the most natural looking presentation underwater. Whether you're using the gulp 6 inch jerk shad or a 5 inch mullet or some other gulp base we'll talk more about this season, that light 1 8 to quarter ounce jig head gives your bait the correct action as it lifts and falls through the water. There's some confusion about fluke being a bottom fish. It's true they live on the bottom, but they feed almost exclusively up. Their strike zone is invariably above their heads, and they spend their lives looking up at prey species to ambush. That's how they evolved, and that's why it's essential that your jig spends as much time as possible gliding off the bottom, one to three feet above their heads. Using lighter jig heads along with proper rod and line manipulation, you can achieve maximum hang time, lengthening the window for a fluke to actually strike your jig. The other reason the single jig is so effective, especially when paired to a 6 inch jerk shad, is the startup speed. By that, I mean when you go to snap your jig off the bottom, that light jig head and the slim profile of the jerk shad attains a burst of speed off the bottom that a heavier jig can never achieve. That quick initial acceleration is a major trigger for any predatory fish, and big fluke are no exception. The alternative to a single jig is the popular high-low rig, usually a heavy bucktail on the bottom, a dropper loop teaser up top. Now that will catch fluke obviously, but the reason it falls short is twofold. One, the teaser acts like a windsock to the jig, so you can't achieve that startup speed coming off the bottom. And two, the jig acts like an anchor on the teaser so you never get that long, smooth glide back to the bottom.
Basically, neither the teaser or the jig looks natural underwater on a high-low rig, and it lacks all the triggering components of the single jig that's fished properly. The fish you catch when jiggling a high-low setup are mostly fish already in a feeding mood. It doesn't do a good job triggering neutral or negative fish at all. Oh, fuck. If you're fishing shallow and you want to consistently catch keepers, mind you, a keeper in my book being fish over 18 inches, regardless of the nonsensical regs, then it really pays to invest some time and effort into learning the single jig method. It starts with your tackle. I'll link some combos for different budgets down below, but think freshwater bass gear as a starting point. A heavy surf or inshore rod is not the right tool for this job. The rest is technique, and it does get a little more technical than your high-low jiggling, since keeping in contact with a light jig does take some practice, and you're also imparting a more specific set of actions to your jig, than just bouncing it rapidly up and down. I have many videos delving into the minutia of single jigging on the channel for your reference. And of course, I also offer private lessons for people who want some in-person training. But definitely look through the older videos and stay tuned for some fairly in-depth instructionals on different kinds of fluke fishing techniques this season on the channel. Okay, that's my fourth keeper and the end of that trip. Hope you guys found this helpful and I'll catch you on the next one.